Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and instead of taking a look at a creepypasta this time, we're going to take a look at some of the top creepypastas that I've done. I've done a lot of these, and to be honest, a lot of you asked me what I think my top 10 list would be, or what I think the upper tier of creepypastas are, and honestly, I can't even begin to tell you. And before I begin into this, I will tell you, this list will change as time goes on, but for now, here's the list as of 2015. So, without ado, I welcome you to my very first top 10, and the top 10 creepypastas, first edition. Number 10, Misfortune.gb Misfortune.gb enters the list with its brilliant concept and story. The story begins lightly telling us about this mystery game, hidden on game cards, and to be honest, it works. Seriously, the thought of a game existing in this fashion is highly likely and being hidden through some incredibly obscure method is technologically possible, and couple that with the fact that it only exists on certain carts works to its uh, favor quite well. I mean, anybody a Game Freak at a time could code something simple, and being a Game Boy game, it would be something quite simple to code into the game. You know, a hidden dev team within the dev team could have done this. And it's technically possible, just throw it in somewhere and uh, make it really hard to access. Now the reason why this isn't higher on the list is due to the cheesy dialogue you get with the demon later on. I mean, this has to be toned down because it gets quite laughable, and honestly adds nothing and just subtracts from the experience. Because while the technical side may work quite well, the demon does the exact opposite. And lastly, it does also attach media, which might I add, adds an extra flair to any creepypasta. Well, almost anyways. Number 9. Russian Sleep Experiment the Russian Sleep Experiment is one of the premier creepypastas to follow. It takes the genre of human exper experimentation, which is one of the popular genres of creepypastas, and ranks it up, you know, following the day-to-day -day investigations of a sleep experiment taken by the Russian military, which on practicality works, because ask yourself, if you were in a country, why, would you, why wouldn't you want an army that needs no sleep? What these soldiers quickly find out, though, is that this really isn't such a great idea. And the rest I'll leave to you so you can go experience it as well. It's quite lengthy. The story works because of the brilliant atmosphere it sets up, and the day-by-day -day logs are not only written well, but formatted well, which in a strange way actually creates this image of you yourself reading these in that environment, which greatly adds to the effect. It's it's kind of hard to explain, but, you know, it, 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 it works. Also, the idea of the slow descent is something that is very real, and the breakdown isn't overdone. And when you see the last act with the confrontation, it actually shows up quite well. And it can go anywhere, even to a more, you know, recent story titled Necrosleep, which almost feels like a sequel to it. So all in all, Russian Sleep Experiment actually is one of my favorite creepypastas ever. It works well, it has proper build-up, proper everything, and it's not overdone. And honestly, what more could you ask for? Number 8. Normal Porn for Normal People This creepypasta ends up being pretty jarring in itself. The name that dog also confusing, asking us to question what is normal porn for the normal person. But when you really delve into it, the website is really all about all around this place. It's, it's a website that goes everywhere, and the videos that are on it are just incredibly disturbing. An example being of a man who has no legs trying to break dance on some DDR mat. And that's not the worst of it too, it gets far, far, far more awful. But this is all presented you know, to a thread that blows up seeing the thought of something like this. Honestly, the scary part about this is the fact that this could exist somewhere on the on the internet, you know, somewhere like the deep web or the dark web, you know, littered with snuff pornography and getting banned frequently, you know, can occur from all these other threads when you mention it. I mean, this could be some underground, you know, snuff ring or whatever, or, you know, not something that just is there to scare the shit out of you. It's, it's something quite serious. You know, although it is somewhat unlikely to, it adds to the brilliance, and the only reason this isn't too high on the list is because, as disturbing as it is, this kind of goes all around the place, and it really doesn't have a good overarching story to go meld it together. Which is why, unfortunately, we can't have normal porn for normal people higher up on the list. But, it is, in fact, one of the best creepypastas out there. Really morbid concept, and, yeah, decent, very good execution. Number 7, Antisonic.dll now you probably didn't expect to see this on the list, and being one of my longest creepypastas ever that I've read, it takes something like Sonic.exe, which is laughable and actually makes this really nice, amazing fan sequel out of it or derivative work. It's not the use of demons or, you know, anything paranormal, 
But it's rather on the presentation, it digs deeper and builds around the little story of Sonic.exe and strengthens it and actually makes this once laughable creepypasta character actually quite chilling. I mean, it takes a lot of effort to take Sonic and make, you know, his creepypasta persona actually scary. And the presentation, again, like I said before, is what makes it, giving us these wannabe investigators who dig through the, the mystery of Sonic.exe audio logs, whatever. And, and uncover this, you know, player who happened to play the game and disappear into it, and is now going through this own, his own personal story and how. Now, some parts are cringeworthy, I'll be honest with you, and that it, and that's why it's not higher on the list, but it is on the list because it does make this creepypasta that is once laughable, this troll pasta, into something that is actually quite beautiful and, you know, creepy to watch, and it keeps you hooked. That is one thing that I really love about it. It gives you an interesting tale that does, in fact, hook you. And although, again, it may not be perfect, it is still very much enjoyable. Number 6, Maria's Revenge. This became a really amazing creepypasta that I read a while back, and also being Sonic as well, you might think it may not have been on the list uh, because of the negative connotation, but this one is original in the sense of it's happening, and also the fact that it has this really dark theory, essentially. It, it's sort of like the Ben Majora's Mask of the Sonic fan base, or Sonic franchise, if you will. And it digs and delves further and further into the dark side of Sonic and the happenings to Maria, which which do get very graphic in nature, by the way. So if you're reading this, please, 18+. plus. Now, I'm not going to tell you all the story, because it's really, really lengthy, actually, and it's really good. But it showcases a lot of media, you know, some pictures, uh, some of them being far too graphic in nature. And, you know, some of those pictures don't actually exist, they're just left as descriptors. And the beautiful part of it was that the footage that this talks about actually does exist, and you can actually watch it on YouTube itself. All in all, the story works out quite well, and it has the uh, devolve into madness, and the, and the theory is dark and satisfying. You enjoy it, and it's dark for the right reasons. Not because it's forced and whatnot, it's because it works, and it works quite well. You know, for something Sonic related, it's quite good, and giving a theory like this, when you really take the source material, and you really apply it in a dark, dark manner, it really works. And in a way, that's saying, not just something for creepypastas, but something for fan bases of certain games, when they write creepypastas as well, it really means a lot. Number 5, Mario. This one is legendary, because the way it was written is beyond amazing. This is uh, an example of a live creepypasta you'd find on the internet, rarely, that goes through numerous posts that were occurring in real time, and the actual gameplay is completely legit. This isn't even a ROM hack, you know, yeah, that, uh, that, that is just used in a creepypasta as an outlier term or whatever. It's actually a ROM hack. And as stated in the creepypasta, it is as dark and as creepy. Hell, you can even download this ROM hack and play it. And I showcase it in a playthrough on this channel. And the ROM hack you find plays exactly like the creepypasta showcases. I cannot stress that enough. The beauty of how it was, and the fact that it caused quite the stir on SMW Central. The picture at the end was something creepy, and the best part of it was that it was done so well, and nothing felt wrong or crazy or out of the way. It was technically possible, and it works. And if I were to experience such a ROM hack, yeah, I'd be scared shitless too. The reactions were perfect, and the way it was presented, was not only legendary but takes a lot of skill not just even in writing but just in any presentation this was this is all out you know top of the line level creepypasta now in the grand scheme of things it was nice and i love the fact that it was in this live format again i can't stress how great that was and i'm not asking for a sequel or anything it's really amazing just the way it is and the only reason it's not really really that higher on the list is uh just because there are you know better creepypastas in my opinion but um you know, for what it is, essentially, it did it did sort of end with the picture, and I just wish, even then, like, it was a little bit more, uh, flat. I wish it sort of had a little more uh, of a uh, story on the outside from a narrator's perspective, because even though it didn't need that, I'm sort of a stickler for that kind of stuff, too. Number four, Squidward's Suicide. Now this, this is something. The Lost Episode Creepypasta, and if you don't know what that is, it's a creepypasta that focuses on a popular show. That is a hidden, unreleased episode. These are successful in not just a description of the show, but also on the overarching story that is showcased. This one, due to the fact that it is an animated show, works with any kind of manipulation, and the fact that it deals with children is also amazing since it hits close to home due to the show's obvious nature. The details of being this junior editor or this intern are also well played, because I'll be honest, this kind of stuff happens a lot. 
And, you know, if I work on something in a, in a studio or a production format, it, it, we do have joke cuts or, you know, maybe we do have graphics that are also for joke purposes too. And just because, you know, something is processing and, you know, we have something to wind down with, you know, a little break here and there, this plays into it. And honestly, with animated shows, there are a lot people, you know, can do with it. You, you, can, you can do anything with an animated show. Anything you want to add, anything you want to change is entirely possible. You're not dealing with live action. You know, there's a lot of people who focus on it, and in a place as large as Nickelodeon, it works because you could literally have that one animator with a thought process that dark. So in the end, this one, you know, meets the list due to its perfect combination of both settings and the combination of the dark, twisted reality with this seemingly harmless children's show. Number three, Ben's Majora's Mask. This is a tale none of us, I think, can ever forget. Being my second ever creepypasta, an episode in the Haunted Gaming series, and a hallmark in writing itself. It, it, it's not only a tale that spanned four parts, but it was an art written by the talented Jadji Sable. Although it is now known as a hoax, it's false, this was as real as a creepypasta could ever get, especially gaming ones. Written in a summary fashion, followed by a video that detailed the gameplay, this was chilling to read and not only, not only read again, but to also watch because it gave you that gameplay. And it actually gave me the inspiration to read into more and more of these delectable tales. The story follows a college student and his quest for nostalgia, playing an old copy of Majora's Mask coming across a spirit who haunts it known as Ben. Spanning into a chapter, you know, with the moon children and whatnot, this one was not only grand, but also stuck to its roots, and it played into expansion quite well. Clearly the story was well written, and it only got creepier from when it started. This one is not only a good tale, but also something that blurred the lines between not only reality, but also fiction. And if Jack Sable didn't come out explaining the story, honestly, I think we'd all still believe it too. Number 2, 1999. This one was really shocking. Not only does it hit really close to my home, literally down to the cities I frequent even today, it follows the tale of a local TV channel. When I mean local, I mean really local. Local is in your local child molester, Satanist, leading kids in with programming that the twisted mind would generate and then sacrificing them, it seems, to the devil. It may sound like some really bad horror movie trying to be edgy, but here, it was far too real. The events are not, not, just, the, not just the technology that made, it, that made a lot of sense, too, but the quest to find the bear was also intriguing as we ventured alongside a possible victim of Mr. Bear. You know, this is where you get this perfect combination of not just the tech side of it, but the personal tale side combining together. Because anyone can run a TV channel, and the hunt for this Mr. Bear was also just intriguing as well. You really wanted to be a part of it. You know, you really wanted to see where it was headed to. You know, and, and, it, and it's also very, very real, too. Having a person such as Mr. Bear lure kids in through television, which, let's be honest, 90% of parents today, or even back then, did not supervise. You know, and come to an undisclosed location and then be taken somewhere to be offered. You know, it, it's fucking scary. And honestly, it could have happened to anyone. And, you know, maybe someone in the world could be doing this. I mean, I hope not. It's entirely possible, though. And that's what put 1999, you know, on number two on this list. Because it is something that combines that technological world with the weird Satanist realistic side, which, as convoluted as it got, still played well into you know, how humans work nowadays and how fucked up things can get. This is why Creepypasta is successful, because it really, really defines itself in reality, and it works. Number one, Funny Mouth. Holy crap, was this one something. It was lengthy, but goddamn was this one of the best kind of Creepypasta. It has this written chat room style and showcases two friends and their chat room getting invaded one night by this mystery user, and from there, let's just say, things get funny. Seriously though, this one is my all-time favorite because as real as the other ones can be, this one takes that definition to the max. Because, let's be honest, this kind of stuff can happen all the time, whether on a YouTube comment, or the Twitch chat, or a Skype request, or a Wikia chat, or just some random IRC client. This was something that worked well. And the way this person wanted to, you know, lick the blood or talk, it was brilliant and the weirdness exists. It's something that if pushed further, you could be the next victim. It's something that really hits close to home personally because I spend you know, a lot of time on the internet, whether at work or here and whatnot, and I've seen people like this that do talk in this weird kind of English manner, and I've never pushed it, but think about it. If I push it, what if, it, what if I end up being, you know, the next funny mouth? You know, it, it, it was perfect. The website existed. It was nice. Everything felt real. It came with media. It was just one of the greatest, greatest, uh, you know, creepypastas I've read, and it still gives me a chill to not only read it, but to know that somebody like this 
can't exist. Now, could the ending really happen to someone? Well, read it and you find out, and honestly, I do hope not. But that being said, next time someone wants to just intrude into your chat room, be a little careful. <laughs> because you might just end up having <laughs> quite the funny mouth. God, that's awful. So, that was the end of my top 10 list. You may notice I haven't thrown some Pokepasses in there, and even Polybius is out of the way, and something like Necrosleep I didn't even mention, but, and, and, and you know what? What you might think should be on the list is probably not on it. Now, this isn't the last list, and it isn't the definitive list, and it can change with time, and honestly, I'll redo it again, and some of these, you may not even see listed again. Maybe Funny Mouth won't be listed again, even though it's the top, you know, maybe it might be gone. But, some time has to pass and I have to read more and more creepy passes. and mind you, all of this is just opinion. I am not the perfect individual. I cannot make the perfect top 10 list. This is my top 10 list. And I want to ask you in the comments below, what is your top 10 list? And how much do you agree with my list and how much do you disagree with the list? This has been the top 10 creepy pastas of all time, or 2015, first edition so far. <laughs> so this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, like, comment, and subscribe. I am out.